Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Go ahead and open your Bibles to Acts 10.38. We, we uh, take our first Sunday night service of each month and have a communion and healing rally, and uh, we minister on the subject of healing. And uh, I would say that since we've been doing this, I w we've majored almost every time on, on our faith, on people's faith to receive from God. And uh, we, we focus on that, which is good because we need to understand that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, that, that people can actually use their faith. But I, I just want to kind of uh, put an emphasis tonight on the anointing. Amen? Because you see, the anointing, there is a factor involved in, in uh, walking with God called the anointing. We know the Holy Spirit is the anointing, but you have an unction from the Holy One. You have, first John tells us we have an unction. First John 2, 20 and 27 tells us we have an unction, and we have an anointing. It's talking about the Holy Ghost. Amen? We know that uh, he is referred to as the anointing. We know that uh, in the Old Covenant that the yoke of the bondage is destroyed and the burdens removed because of the anointing or I think King James says the fatness, but it, it means the anointing. It's referring to the oil because they were anointed with oil. The, and uh, <clears throat> we know it refers to the Holy Spirit because the, uh, in the Old Testament, and when they were to anoint someone for service, they would take oil and pull it over the top of the head and come all down them. And that was, that was a physical uh, type of the anointing, the Holy Ghost coming on them. Amen. Now, by, now we're going to read this verse, and then we read this verse here in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with them. Now we know that the anointing came on Jesus when he went into the wilderness. Remember over in Luke chapter 4 that Jesus came to John and John saw him and said, Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. And then he came to G John and, J and John said, I need to be baptized of thee. And Jesus said, Suffer it. Uh, for we must fulfill righteousness, and he baptized him. When he came up out of the water, he, uh, John saw a dove coming on him, a heavenly dove coming on him, and heard a voice from heaven say, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And Jesus, being led of the Spirit, went into the wilderness. He was tempted 40 days, and in those days he did eat nothing. And after he, afterward he was a hungered. Amen? And Satan said to him, You know, if you be the Son of God, take these stones and turn them to bread. Uh, and, and Jesus said, Thou shalt not live by bread alone. It is written, Thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. And then um, um, Satan took him to, to a high place and said, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said, uh, if you'll bow down and worship me, I, you know, all this has been delivered unto me and to my power, and I, and I give it to whomever I will. And if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give them to you. And Jesus said, Thou shalt worship, it's written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. And then Satan took him to the pinnacle of the temple and said, Cast yourself down from thence, for it's written. See, Satan, he figured out Jesus is using the word. Now he's going to try to misuse the word on Jesus. And he said, For it is written that the angels shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus said, It is also written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And Satan departed from him for a season. And then and the next thing says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Amen. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the tabernacle, to the temple, and, uh, as it was his custom, and took the scroll and opened the book for the place in Isaiah where it said, and began to read, said, the Spirit of the Lord's upon me because he's anointed me. Amen. All right? That's all over in Luke chapter 4. Now, I've just kind of read, read by that real quick. Hallelujah. I was just trying to get the fact that the anointing is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have biblical proof. The anointing is the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God came on him. Jesus said that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. Hallelujah. And so God, Acts 10, 38 says that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now we know this. I'm sorry I had to drink that. We know this, we've taught this, you know, that there are 32 recorded healings in the four Gospels. Of the 32, there are 19 distinctive healings. In other words, there are recounts in the different Gospels of the same healing. And of the 19, 12 said that th their faith made them whole. Amen? So that means the, the highest majority get healed because they got healed because their faith was working. But you know what? That leaves seven. See, seven where, where we have where the anointing was involved. Now, the anointing is always about, but the anointing, you know, did, remember, remember um, um, the man in the, uh, Solomon's porch? Remember that guy? 
Jesus passed by him. He's been there. And Jesus looks at him and says, will you be made whole? He says, sir. He says, when the, I have no man, when the, you know, the angel come down a certain season, trouble the water, I have no man to get me in because by the time they get me down there, somebody else gets in before me and I don't get it. That wasn't the question. Jesus said, rise, walk. He got up and walked. And it really wasn't his faith because he wasn't involved in faith. He was still, he was still fussed about the fact nobody could get him down there quick enough. <clears throat> I mean, I guess they needed a catapult system where they had a rock where somebody cut a rope and... Now, now, I remember my kids were in school and one of their Bible teachers told them that it was a mineral spring and, and from minerals 30 miles away and that's what caused the healing. Isn't that amazing that all the minerals caused one person to get healed? If it was the minerals, it would be anybody could get in there and get it. See, we, we buy into mantras that just aren't Bible. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. So, the anointing of God, <coughs> if we look over into Isaiah, hallelujah. <clears throat> I believe 1027, I could be wrong, but we'll just. And it shall come to pass in that day, his bird shall be taken off his shoulder and his yoke off his neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing of God is the yoke destroying, burden removing power of God. Did you know sickness is a burden? I said sickness is a yoke of burden. It'll yoke to you and burden you with, with pain. It'll burden you with you know, lack of energy. It'll burden you with lack of all kinds of things physically. It is a burden. And the anointing will destroy that yoke. Jesus was anointed to destroy the yoke of sickness. People came to him out in the wilderness and he healed the sick. I mean, demons were cast out. People were made whole. You know, uh, uh, all kinds of the things and diseases that came and sicknesses came and that Jesus ministered to. In the book of Acts, they were anointed. They were healed the sick. Philip went down to Samaria. He had an, an anointing along the lines uh, of, uh, uh, well, look over in Acts chapter uh, oh, 08. Verse 5, then Philip went down to, to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people gave, uh, with one accord, gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies and were lame were healed. Philip had an anointing to minister along the lines of palsies and lame. Dad Hagen, you talk, you know, talk to Dad Hagen, uh, well, not talk to him, he was sharing his meetings. You know, he had an anointing along the lines of growths and tumors. He had, had gifts of healings working in him, but he had particular success with growths and tumors. F.F. So F. Bosworth um, could line people up, deaf and mute, deaf and dumb. Line them up and nine out of ten when they get instantly healed. Boom, 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 boom. Just go down the line, boom, instantly See, so there are anointings we have in the gifts of healings, but it's still an anointing by the Holy Ghost that when that manifestation is in operation, um, uh, you, you go about listening, and Dad said the Lord appeared to him, placed his finger into the palm of his right hand, and said, I've given unto thee a special, a special anointing to heal the sick. He said, now when you tell the people, that anointing will be coming to manifestation. When that anointing is in manifestation, you lay hands on the sick, they'll be healed of their diseases and so forth and so on. And uh, he said, now you tell them, and so every, every time he started telling the story, he said, I start telling it, my hand would start burning. Then my palm, my hand would start burning. R Oral Roberts would say the same thing. He said that his hand would burn for hours. Not as, and, and then the Lord told Brother Hagin, he said, now it's in your hands, not in your feet. He said, I didn't say lay your feet on anybody. He said, he had a sense of humor. The Lord has a sense of humor. You know, but Brother Roberts used to talk about how the anointing would just burn in his hand for hours. Go back unto the healing and revival. Those, those, there, was, there were strong anointings and manifestations. You know, things would happen. Um, uh, now, listen, sometimes their doctrine would be a little off. Now, Benny Hinn obviously has a strong healing anointing. Catherine Crewman had a tremendous healing anointing. She could, now, if she could walk in the back of a building and they'd be lined up. She'd come in from the back door. Nobody would know it. They'd be worshiping God. And she'd come by and just touch the end of the people. And they'd just start falling out in the power as she went through the building. They wouldn't know she was coming. It wasn't like they were, okay, I'm going to fall out. She would come in from behind them. They just boom, 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 boom. Now, see, Benny Hinn hung around Catherine Kuhlman. But ben, now, now, Catherine wasn't a faith, didn't really uh, get in with the faith people. As a matter of fact, she made fun of them. See, what she didn't understand, there was two sides to the equation. One's the anointing, one's faith. 
Amen. We want, we want to give everybody every opportunity to get what God has for them, whether it's the, from the anointing or whether it's from believing the God on their own. And see, when, since the anointing is manifest as he wills, then we have to teach people faith too, so that because uh, if, if there's not a manifestation, they can go out and still, and still pursue and get things from heaven. Amen. We said, but he hung, around, he hung around Captain Kuhlman, and that got off on him. That anointing got off on him. That's why he has such strong healing ministries and, and anointings in his services. See? That, you know, I'm not saying the mantle got past him, but he got around it and it got on him. Amen? I, I've seen people who have Dad Hagen's, Dad, Dad Hagen's teaching anointing. Now, one of the, close, the closest I've ever seen to it was Mark Brzee. I mean, he, that, that, that teaching anointing of Dad Hagen got on Mark Brzee. Uh, now, there's other sides that didn't. You know, the, the, the prophetic anointing like what Dad had and the prophet off didn't get on him like that, but the teaching anointing did. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, uh, everybody's heard of R.W. Shambach, but Shambach was the coat holder for A.A. A. Allen. You see? So these different anointings, you know, or get passed around or passed on. And Jesus took his disciples and said, and, and it's obvious, it's obvious that the inner three really, especially Peter and John, uh, got a hold of something along the lines of healing. As a matter of fact, so much, Peter may have gotten more than any of them. How do you know? Because the book of Acts tells us that when he walked through the streets, his shadow would fall on people and they'd get healed. Hallelujah. Thank God for the transferableness of the anointing. Why? Because it's the Holy Ghost, and that can be transferred or imparted. We know in the Old Testament, the Elisha wanted the double portion of the anointing of Elijah. You know, we got people running around all the time, oh, pray for me that I get the double anointing. Well, in that case, that was a special promise. I can't pray for you to get the special, you know, double anointing of Elijah, but I can pray for you that God will transfer or give you whatever anointing he, he deems necessary by the Holy Ghost unless he says something different. Amen? Hallelujah. And, um, but anyway, so that anointing of, of Catherine Kuhlman along the prayer for the sick, got on Benny Hinn. Now, listen, Catherine's doctrine sometimes a little bit off. When I, say, I don't say error, but it was just, eh. some of y'all remember Benny Hinn coming out and, and preaching that, that teaching on uh, good morning Holy Spirit and saying that the Holy Spirit is the Father. And he, he kind of, he got in, he got in some things that, that just caused all kinds of confusion. And one of the things, he, he, he used a book. I mean, a song written by the Rambos, you know, um, Holy Spirit, thou art welcomed in this place. He said, omnipotent Father, full of mercy. He used that as a basis to prove that his doctrine was right. Because of a song. Well, we, we, we got to use the Word of God, you know. So some of the things in the Good Morning Holy Spirit were off. But I'm telling you, he's anointed. You can't argue with the anointing. And I say off, and I'm going to send people to hell. But it'll bring confusion. You know, that's why, you know, that's why we have teachers in the body of Christ. They, they bring clarity. <laughs> Thank God for teachers. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but I tell you, the anointing of God will just get, you, know, you get into services where his, that anointing starts manifesting. And people just start getting healed of all kinds of things. So we thank God for the anointing. We thank God when the Holy Spirit's manifest. Now, we, we've had people... Uh, uh, get into the faith side of things so hard and get so legalistic about it when the anointing comes to deliver they won't even go receive what do you mean well a number of years ago we had joe morris here and i love, now joe and i were classmates at raymond good guy we, i love joe um we, he's just he's just a, he's a great guy i mean even when he was 17 he was a little jer jerky at 17 but at, joe i love you brother now, i'm just messing with him i was a i was a i was a classroom monitor and joe would come in and aggravate me <laughs> stick his id badge to his head and you know and be late and I expect me to let him in and, and i did never sent him to the office to get a late slip i mean if you weren't in the classroom when the buzz went if you're stepping one foot outside you're supposed to, have to go get a late slip i know i wouldn't make him that now somebody i did make some other people go but not joe <laughs> hallelujah but he was here ministering he's a, he got over into the spirit word, you know you know if you've been around joe's ministry he operates in word of knowledge uh, gifts of healings. Hallelujah. And he began to call out something. And nobody would come up. Now, back then, we had, had a center aisle without any chairs in it. Uh, we, this Because of the camera set up, we do this now. But there was, right here on the second row, there was a lady sitting there. And he just walked right up to her. Said, ma'am, now, are you, do you have such and such going on in your body? Da, 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 da. I mean, and she just sits there and looks at him and goes, and he'd, he'd step back over here, and he'd call out something else and minister to a few other people. He'd come back over to that woman. Now, I, I, man, I, the, Lord, see, the Lord's showing me you're dealing with such and such, such and such. Nope. 
and he'd call out, you know, a knee or this and then he ministered to somebody else. He kept coming back to that woman. Do you remember that? Well, who was here for that? Okay. He just kept coming back to that woman. And she wouldn't budge. After about 20 minutes of that, someone there, she finally said, well, I'm, I've received my healing. And I'm, and I'm thinking, you, mm. the Holy Ghost has brought the anointing to deliver what you've been believing for. You believe you receive it, and here's the delivery package. You say, nah, I got it by faith. Well, at some point in time, the guy's going to show up with the package. I mean, it's like, you know, UPS showing and going, you carrying hunt? Yep. Did you order such and such? Nope. I got it. I've already received it. Well, here, nope, I've received it by faith. But here it is. I've received it by faith. It's unbelief for me to tell you that, I have, that I'm waiting on it to get here. And uh, it, it took 20 minutes to break through. See, what we didn't, we didn't understand was we, when we pray, believe that we receive and we shall have. Now, how God delivers, I said how God delivers is up to God. And if he does it, you're sitting in your living room and you go, whoa, glory to God. It just manifested. Or if a healing ministry comes through or a ministry comes through and walks up and says, the Lord shows me you've been dealing with such and such. See, that's the delivery guy. Yeah. It's the ye shall have part. The anointing has come to be added to your faith and bring it to pass. See, I, Mark, Mark Brzee said something one time. Now, I don't know if he heard somebody else say it, but I heard him say it. So I'll give him credit. And if he calls me up and says, hey, I heard so-and-so say that. Okay, I'll change the story. But until then, I heard him say it. He said, you can have 70% faith and 30% anointing and still get the answer because it adds up to 100%. You can have 20% faith and 80% anointing. You get 100%, you still get the answer. You can have 100% anointing or you can have 100% faith and you can still get the answer. But the combination in any form, whatever, so sometimes you get people in there, they've got about 30% faith and there's about 60% anointing and there's a gap in there. What do we do? We keep teaching. We keep teaching the word. Why? So that faith will rise up and, and meet whatever, whatever place they are. So when the anointings are manifestation, this anointings can be in different levels. They can be in different, uh, different emphasis or different strengths of the anointing. I've been in services where the anointing is so strong, it didn't matter. I mean, it was like the spirit of faith was in there. The anointing was in there. It didn't matter what, if anybody believed, didn't believe or whatever, he got it. I've been in services where the anointing was there, but they, there, was, there, was, there was a gap between the anointing and their 100%, and, and they'd have their faith, and, you, you know, some people's faith was up there, they'd get it, some people wasn't, you know, they, 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 they'd fall short. Hallelujah. Now, let me say this. If you're operating on 50, 60, 70, 80% anointing, I mean, faith, and you're not getting there, but the anointing shows up, reach in there and let that anointing take, fill in that gap. I said, let the anointing fill in the gap. Hallelujah. Thank God for the anointing. I've seen people get healed because, you know, they, they were believing God, but then the anointing was manifest. It was enough, it was enough of the anointing. How, why would God do it? Because he just, that's the way he, he does things, the way he thinks they should be done. And listen, maybe, maybe the people in the room aren't pulling on the, the, the Spirit of God enough. I can tell you that the, 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 the um, uh, People's faith, or people's faith in the anointing can control how much anointing is manifest. Well, I don't believe that. Jesus could there do no mighty work, save he laid his hand on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief and went round about their villages teaching. Amen. Their unbelief kept the anointing from working. And if anybody was anointed 150,000%, Jesus was. He had the, he had the spirit without measure. There was no limitations to the anointing in his life. And he could there do no mighty work. So he was laid a hand on a few sick folk. Greek says few people with minor ailments and healed them. Had a couple of headaches and stomach viruses. No, no mighty miracles were wrought. No lame walk. No blind saw. Why? Their unbelief. Their unbelief. 
I said their unbelief. Amen? Unbelief can keep the anointing from working. Unbelief is like a dam in a stream. It'll stop it from flowing. Now, you know, we uh, up at Blowing Rock, there's a, you know, the Moses Cone Manor's up there. And now at the bottom of Moses Cone Manor is Bass Lake, lake that Moses put in there for his wife, you know, to look at from the house when they went up on their summer retreat. And it's called Bass Lake. Well, about 15 years ago, a couple of beaver got in there. And they started damming up where the stream came into the lake. And they started messing it up. I mean, silt started getting in there, and, you know, and it just kind of just clogged it all up. They had to relocate the beaver. Because those, those suckers can flat out put some wood down. It's amazing. They had to put stuff around all the trees around the lake because all those big trees have been there for deck for a hundred years or whatever, and, and the beaver was starting to go, we're going to take these down. I mean, talk big old, they were starting, you can look up there and there's, there's marks down the trees where they're working on them. And they're, they're machines, man. I mean, they are efficient wood-eating machines. The original wood chipper. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And, um, they, they start, what did happen? When they started putting those trees into this river, and the, to the stream that was flowing into the lake, it started damming it up and silted up, and it just, the whole end down there got all land on it and everything with little pools. Where they, because they like to swim. They like to build their own private swimming pool with their little own estates on there where they swim up and get up under there. Of course, then they have babies, and the babies start eating trees. And it stopped the flow. It, it dammed up the flow. And you see, in our life, when un unbelief is like beavers cutting trees down in your life, it'll dam it up so that the flow's not there. So unbelief, it will inhibit the anointing. I said unbelief will inhibit the anointing. You can be in a service, and unbelief will start inhibiting the anointing. Remember in one place, Jesus went to somebody and took them outside of town. Why, wow, it's too much. Probably, and my guess is, and I, just from what I know about the, the, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, that there was too much unbelief there. He had to get them away from the unbelief so he could minister to them. The un unbelief will mess you up. Unbelief will mess up with the anointing. And so listen, you know, and listen, you can get into, almost get into unbelief about the anointing with your faith about your faith. Did I just mess you up just then? You can begin to put so much confidence in your faith, you don't have any trust in the anointing. You're putting all your dependence on, I believe that I received, and not allow the anointing to work. So we want to thank God that, you know, the anointing is working. The anointing is working in us. Hallelujah. We we're expecting, you know, if God wants to deliver through the through, through gifts of healing, praise God. Go ahead and bring it on, Lord. Hallelujah. I, listen, I want, to whatever, I want to be well whatever way it comes. Amen. I'm believing God. If, I, if that's not working, I'm using the anointing. If that's not working, I'm doing whatever. It, I mean, you know, I, I, I believe in getting well. So does Jesus. You know, Jesus had a doctor on his, uh, that, that kind of followed his ministry, he even wrote part of the Bible. Yeah. Luke, the physician. Amen. Jesus isn't got against doctors. Hallelujah. But thank God he's greater than doctors. He is the great physician. I said he's the great physician. Amen. Amen. He even told, he looked over at, um, at um, uh, Paul wrote over to Timothy one day and said, now look, You've been having a little stomach trouble. Just drink some wine. Now, remember, I like what Guy Dunnick said about this. He said, he said, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake, for your altered infirmities. He said, so drink it from, so paraphrasing that, drink it for medicinal purposes. He didn't say a thing in the word about drinking it for pleasure. Now, a lot of people use that to say they could drink for pleasure. And Paul said, was telling them to use it for medicinal purposes. Didn't say a stinking word about drinking wine for pleasure. That went over big. But did he? He said, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake, for your altered infirmities. Then he, the, he, and then we got people, that, see, God says, okay, to drink wine. He said, for your infirmities, not for your pleasure. Got a lot of people who want to drink for pleasure. You don't need that. You need the Holy Ghost. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You need a little dose of the Holy Ghost. Be not drunk with wine. Word, be drunk does not mean, it doesn't mean staggering. It just means intoxicated. You can be intoxicated uh, way early on. Some people will sip just about intoxicate them. Hello? I mean, you go take communion at, at a liturgical church, they use real wine, you walk away staggering, just one little sip. If, 
if you don't drink and you go to a liturgical church and they give you, they use real wine. I mean, I'm like, give me my Welch's white grape juice, baby. Hallelujah. Now, the anointing of God is the Holy Ghost. There is healing power in, his, in him to deliver to, the, to humanity. Jesus was anointed with it without measure. But we see the disciples were anointed with it too. They went out. Their commission of the 70 was to go what? Heal the sick. One of the things was heal the sick. The 12, heal the sick. Amen. They came back. Devils come out. People have been well. They raised the dead. I mean, raised the dead. Then the great commission of the church. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. And then the last thing on the list is they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So what's that? The anointing? The anointing? Said the anointing. Empowering them for ministry. That anointing goes in the bodies. Hallelujah. Amen. I said amen. Now if it don't work at the people preaching it, don't believe it. Well, the Lord don't heal these days. You know, that's done, that was done away with. It's the day last apostle died. All those miracles, signs and wonders went away. We don't have that anymore. Well, it's hard for you to go out and believe and have the anointing manifest. That's why you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. Be a present, be ever, ever, ever aware of the presence of the, of the anointing. The Holy One, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Manifest in your life, glory to God. Working through your body. Working through you as a vessel of honor. Glory to God. Flowing out of you and his presence coming on men and women. That, that, that laying on of hands, there's an anointing there. Now, I know in my own ministry, I've heard others talk about it, but I've experienced it myself. You're going down praying for the sick and walking down the line praying for the sick. And, you put your, and you'll feel the anointing flow out of your body. I mean, flow right out of your body into them, and sometimes they'll come right back. They, they, tried, they tried to get it with their head. They tried to, you know, receive it some other way. Then, you know, they just, they, they're trying to figure out how to get it. They don't know, flow out. And they, and they, no, 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 no. You have to stop. Now just receive. Lay hands on Phil and go out and go into them. Hallelujah. Well, I can't make that up. I can't work that up. I can't create that. That's the Holy Ghost. Other times you lay hands on them, don't feel a thing. What will you lay hands on people in faith? You can lay hands on people in faith. Because it's the ordinance of the church. But I tell you, there's, a, there's something different when the anointing's in manifestation. There's just something different when the anointing's in manifestation. There's, a, there's, there's, there's things at work. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God for the anointing. Yes. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God that when, you know, uh, Peter's sh Peter shadow falling on people, they got healed. Amen. I said Amen. Glory to God. We don't, we don't see enough in the church anymore, the whole church. And I know in certain circles we'll see some things because we, we expect it. Um, uh, Kevin and Ann Durant, a number of years ago, they, we were sitting talking, and after a service, uh, they'd been with us. It's, it's probably been a good 12, 15 years ago too, or maybe longer, I don't remember. Uh, we were sitting around the living room at one night after church, and um, we, 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 we'd gone back to the house to eat, and they just came, you know, and we ate at the house, and they were, sitting there, and we were talking, and, and uh, they got talking about they went to a Benny Hinn meeting in Atlanta. Well, he got stuck out on the parkway out there, you know, the, the, the uh, belt line. I, I was thinking the French were perific. The belt line, you know, the, the French call it the perific, which is the perimeter is the, 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 you know, the same thing. So the belt line. He, he couldn't get into the, he couldn't get to the church, to the, to the Coliseum. Uh, I don't know which one it was. I don't know if it was the one that Georgia Tech or the, you know, the old Atlanta football stadium before they, you know, tore it down and built the new one. But whichever one it was, <clears throat> it was filled up with people. Full. Now, the atmosphere of faith will bring the anointing into manifestation. That's why it's important that we as the church come with an anticipation and atmosphere about the things of God, because we can create an atmosphere. Sister Wilkerson, Jean Wilkerson, now not to be confused with the soothsayer on uh, Time magazine or whatever it is every year, or at one time it was one of them tabloid magazines every year. Uh, Wilk what's her name, Dickerson? Jean, she, gives, you know, she, say, she would prophesy every year, and, not, and about 30% about came to pass. That's not a good record. All right? You may as well go down to Eastern Carolina, find you one of them signs, you know, financial advisor, and then next to that rundown mobile home. 
<clears throat> you ever seen any of those down there? Yeah. <laughs> the Lord travels down. He's seen them. <laughs> yeah, old run-down trailer. It's financial advisor. Say palm reading, you know. They're in the mountains too. <laughs> I have seen them up there too. Hallelujah. But I, didn't want, I, I, I could talk about my folk. I just want to talk about some of everybody else's folk. All right. <clears throat> Amen. But Sister Wilkinson prophesied. I heard it on a, I have a tape. I wish I could find it. I can't hear. I remember listening to it years ago. She did it at Rhema or something, and she began to prophesy. I said, atmosphere, atmosphere, cold. If you want to kind of how she sounded, uh, Billy Brim's how she sounded. Billy Brim sounds a lot like Sister Wilkerson sounded because she hung around her. She's going to sit at her feet, sit in her house there in Tulsa and, and sit at her feet, and that only got on her. And she, you know, I mean, you know, when Sister uh, Billy Brim starts going in, she kind of, the glory. That's how Sister Wilkerson prophesied. Now, I'm going to tell you what, I've been in meetings with Sister Wilkerson before she went home with the Lord, she'd open her mouth and just say the glory and the hair on the back of your neck would stand up. Just, I mean, that woman just was in a place with God. Hallelujah. Amen. So anyway, um, but she said, she prophesied, said, atmosphere, atmosphere calleth me. She's speaking by the Holy Ghost. Whether for good or for evil, it calleth me. Those are the, that's all I remember from that prophecy, that, that statement about the atmosphere. And see what I'm saying? The atmosphere of faith can call the anointing into manifestation. I said the atmosphere of faith can call the anointing into manifestation. So Kevin and Ann were talking about, um, about being in that Benny Hinn meeting. You know, he's out on the beltway, can't get there. And they're down, it's, well, you know, Brother Hinn's out there. And, and so people, you know, a bunch of charismatics get together. And somebody's going to take over and start singing some courses. And everybody's going to join in. You know, that's just the way charismatics are. Somebody can't take it no more. They got to do something. So they'll just start working. And it'll spread. And, and, said, and so they said, and then, they, you know, they've done that. And they kind of sat back down. And all of a sudden, somewhere across the building, somebody started screaming, I got it. I got it. And somebody got healed. And then somebody else, somewhere else started jumping up and started screaming they were healed. And over here, they started jumping up and started screaming they were healed. And over here, what happened? The atmosphere of faith about what was coming, he hadn't even got into the building yet. But the atmosphere called the Holy One. And he came. And as he came into the place, people started getting healed. Well, they weren't just sitting there going, oh, thank you, I receive, thank you, I receive, thank you. And I'm not mocking that. What I'm saying is there is a place for the anointing in people receiving too. And we can't reject the anointing over faith. And we can't reject faith over the anointing. But at the same time, we, we need to entreat both. And so they start popping up all over the place. They were getting healed everywhere, all over the building. And Benny Hinn hadn't even got there yet. Because the atmosphere began to summon the Holy One. The atmosphere began to summon the anointing. And he came, and when he, oh, when he comes. We got him in us. But you don't have all of him in you. Now you can get filled up, but there's more of him. Are you here? Don't ever think that when you get filled or full of the Holy Ghost, there's no more, that, that, that's all of him. There's more of him. As a matter of fact, and what you get filled up with can go down. Because over and over in the book of Acts, they got filled all over again. As a matter of fact, Paul said, be ye being filled with the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be ye filled, or be ye being filled, consistently being filled. Amen. Him just constantly flowing in. Our church services and our meetings can call, can summon the Spirit. And when He comes, oh my. I said, oh my. When He comes in manifestation, oh, praise God. The anointing comes. That which cannot be wrought by the, hand, by the hands of men. That which cannot be accomplished by men's efforts. That which man cannot dream up or conceive can take place in the presence of the anointing. He can do that which is the impossible. And he can bridge the gap between your faith and your answer. Amen. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my. And he comes in glory. And he comes in majesty. 
And it's, it's imperative upon the church to entreat his presence. See, we're, we're, uh, I think I said it here this morning, but we're charged with the command not to grieve the Holy Spirit. We're charged to entreat him. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Beckon his manifestation. Create an atmosphere where the spirit works in liberty and freedom. Uh, uh, you know, a um, number of years ago, some of y'all probably have the book or read or gotten the tape series or the CD series or whatever called Plans, Purposes, and Pursuits. And the week before the 1987 camp meeting, the Holy uh, Jesus appeared to Dad Hagen. Now, he appeared to him eight times between 1940-whatever, 1958 or whatever. And um, uh, Brother Hagen had written the book, I Believe in Visions. Now, the, the uh, 87 vision is not in that book. Because it, it was a different thing. He, and, and he said that the Lord appeared to him. And, and what he said to him when he appeared to him was this. Uh, clapping is neither praise nor worship. And in that vision, he wanted to talk about we've been substituting brass for gold. Now listen, one of the major leading worship magazines came out when Dad Hagen preached at a camp meeting and called him a false prophet. Why? Because it messed with their thing. It messed with their groove. Amen. Call him a false prophet. But the truth of the matter is, we can't substitute brass for gold. Brass shines, brass is golden, but it's not. Take it down and try to sell it. Amen? All right, I'm going to tell my son he can't put anything sticky on here anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know this is going to be on TV, but it's like he spilled drink on it. Probably spilled Bojangles tea, and I'm telling you, that's sweet. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, I, I just got to sit down. But I'm not done. You know, you know uh, it's the third time preaching today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, you know, Dad Hagen, you know, he, he, he would sit down sometimes and praying for the sick because you, you last longer than the anointing when, you're, when your body's not getting tired. Brother Roberts used to sit there. He prayed for thousands of people. He'd sit in a chair. You go back and look at the old videos. He'd sit in the chair, and they'd bring him by the platform in front of him. Why? You last longer. The body doesn't get tired. It, it lasts longer in the presence of the anointing. Amen? And uh, so Dad began to minister on that subject. And you, you go get the book and read it. It's a good book. It'll help you. Um, he began to talk to him about, you know, substituting brass for gold. The clapping is neither praise nor worship. See, we can dissipate the anointing or, a flesh, or, or by giving a fleshly response to the manifestation of the Spirit. There's times to run. There's times to shout. There's times to dance. There's, there's, there are, there are uh, anointings for that kind of exuberation. That type of manifestation of, of, of joy and shouting and so forth. But we've got to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Because there's times, it's not the time to shout and to scream and to holler. It's time to let the Holy Spirit do a work he's come to do. Amen. There's times, it's just a time to say, oh, Holy Spirit, have your way. Work in people. We don't want to grieve him. We want to be sensitive to him. He comes in different ways. Listen, when he comes and it's time, to, if, if he comes and, 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 uh, and, and the uh, purpose of that service at that point is to have shout and scream and hollering, I mean, hanging from the chandelier, roll under the pews and out the front door of the church, I win with the best of them. And I grew up Pentecostal. I know how to do it. Amen? But that's not the response to his presence every time. Hello? 
we were at um, Winter Bible one year, and Dad's having Holy Ghost meetings out there. Well, one night, I mean, I mean, it's, it's unglued out there. And they got kind of joking about it, you know, how, how many chairs Craig broke. You know, how many chairs he fell over and broke. And, 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 uh, and, and, and people, you know, uh, rest church, you know, 22, Craig 3 or something like that. I mean, they were having fun. They just kind of had fun with it, you know. Uh, praise the Lord. And, um, um, you know, but the next night, the very next night, um, we're back in there. And um, people always think that one way is the only way. You know, oh, last night we had to run and shoot, uh, shout and jump and holler and, you know, glory to God. That was the way. But see, the next, the very next night, the anointing was different. I'll never forget. Uh, we were in there and, and the night before was crazy. I mean, you know, everybody got blessed. Everybody went home blessed. They were talking about how wonderful it was. To be, and it's, it, listen, I, I, God does those things just, just to get you, get the starch out of your collar. Some of, you, some of us get too much starch on our collar and we get stiff. He likes, to, he likes to take the starch out every once in a while. But the next night, some woman on the other side of the auditorium decided she was going to get us all back into that crazy, you know, anointing. And so she tries to start laughing. <laughs> I, t I tell you, she sounded like the Wicked Witch from the West and the Wizard of Oz. I thought, Lord, Lord, shut that woman up. If there is an anointing here, she's going to kill it. <laughs> you know, and people around her trying to join in with her, and, and Brother Hagin just kind of, he was teaching something. And I'll tell you something. See, there's going to be an anointing on the person to minister the Word of God. Y'all mind if I share like this? It could be an anointing on somebody just to share the Word of God. And it's just as much the anointing as it was to run, jump, and holler. Sometimes more. And uh, he leaned over the podium and just went, ha, 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 ha. And after a couple of minutes, he, I think, I don't know if he just got tired of it. And he, he just called, he called David Ingalls up to sing a song. Dave, Brother Dave, come on up here and sing something. Sometimes you, you, ministers know what you need. You ever heard Vicki Jameson say this in the past? She said that, uh, that she interprets the Holy Ghost in her services. She understands what he's trying to do and then it gives instruction on the, on the service on what to do so that whatever he's endeavoring to do can go. Mark Brzee talks about there's flows, like a river that flows of the different spirit. He can flow over here for a little and go back over here and go here during a service, like a winding river. He can be flowing through a service all kinds of different ways. Brother David came up and started playing a song, and I am telling you, in about four minutes, the whole place is on their knees, on their face before God. Oh, what a sweet presence of the Lord. And it was the anointing for that time. Other times we'd have services like that. You know, Brother Hagin, we have those kind of wild Holy Ghost. We call, we call them Holy Ghost services, which is really a misnomer because if you're teaching the Word of God under the anointing, it's a Holy Ghost service. We call it Holy Ghost because it's wild. You know, we think Pentecostal, glory to God. We ran, shouted, and jumped, sweat. I mean, made 60 laps around the building in the church service last night. Lost, tw tw lost 20 pounds, glory to God. Broke four chairs. I'm not mocking that. I'm just saying well, that, that, can, that is one side of things when the Spirit of God manifests himself that way. But I've seen services like that one night, and Dad, he can come back in there the next night. Everybody's expecting the exact same thing. He opens up the Bible and says, turn your Bibles to Mark, the chapter, 11th chapter. It teaches a 45-minute lesson, closes the Bible, zips up, and says, let's go home. And it was just as anointed. Different ebb, different flow of the Spirit. Now, what he, I learned from him is you don't ever let people get uh, limited to one side of the things of God because there's other sides. Now, what we've done in our teaching on faith, some, so we've got a lot of faith people who don't know, the, don't know the move of the Spirit. Now, I'll just be real blunt with you. There's a lot of faith people who call themselves faith people who don't really know the first thing about the move of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not being critical. I'm just being factual. I've been around them. The Holy Ghost came up with a red feather and a white hat and, and, and a pink shirt and penny loafers. White penny loafers. They wouldn't know it was the Holy Ghost. They'd be knocking them upside the head with a two by four. Because they're going to teach their faith lesson. But the Spirit of God may want to demonstrate his, your faith lesson today. 
He may want to demonstrate things in the spirit today. That went over big. I've been around them. They don't, they don't like to move with the spirit. They, they, I mean, they, they, they need the starch taken out of their collar. They get out the rain and sit out there, and they're the stiffest bunch in the building, sitting over in the preacher section. That went over even bigger. Y'all should be amen, and you're, the, you're not out there. Hallelujah. But the anointing, Jesus was anointed. So what do I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap back around here. The anointing comes to do often what people's faith isn't doing. God is good. You guess, wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody's faith just worked 100% and we got to answer every single time we open their mouth? Now that's what we teach. Why we teach it? Because you can't get there if we don't teach it. You can't get your faith out there if, you don't, if it's not taught. If you're not, if you're not endeavoring to get there, you'll never get there. So we're always trying to bring people up. Amen. But sometimes you're just going to have to have a little extra. And we've got, we got the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in manifestation. They, they are really mercies of God for where we, where we come up short and hadn't gotten there yet. You know, by our Bible's exceeding growing faith. The Bible says we have exceeding growing faith, which means what? It's always growing. Now I was watching some, I saw somebody on Facebook today, they had talked about, they had gotten to where they could bench 200 pounds in a year, which was great. I mean, for them, that was great. And I'm thinking, and I thought back when I was young, I was benching 200 pounds in, 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 in two and a half months. I was at the 360 in a year in a pyramid workout, thinking, well, when I was young, it didn't take me long to get to 200 pounds. I was there in, you know, a couple, a couple of months. And then me and Mark, Mark Crum, some of y'all remember Mark Crum, great big old guy. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> we went over to the, the Guilford Wild one day. We hadn't worked out in uh, eight, nine years, either one of us. Went in there, and we benched 225 ten times that first day. Could not lift our hands above our shoulders the next morning. For three, he was a carpenter. He couldn't work for three days. He couldn't get the hammer up to swing the hammer. Hallelujah. But you know, uh, technically, I had the capacity to go back there again. Don't have the desire. I don't have the desire to get in the gym an hour and a half a day every day of the week. I don't have the desire to hurt all the time. You know what I'm saying? I don't have the desire to sit there and work and work and work and work. I'd rather drink a Pepsi with real sugar in it and watch a ball game. Hallelujah. Go up to West Jefferson, get me a case of Dr. Pepper's, glass bottle of Dr. Pepper's with real sugar in them, cane sugar, by the way, and drink that with a, with a, a nab. Eat that, bye, 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 bye. Amen. Now, I'm just being silly now. But the, the gifts of the Spirit are workings in our life through us and to us, but also to us, where maybe your faith isn't making the, making the grade. Well, when the Holy Spirit's a manifestation, don't push him away. I said, don't push him away. Now, what do I do if the Holy Spirit's not in manifestation? Keep working your faith. Keep building, keep building, keep building, keep building. But if the Holy Ghost comes into a service and says, by, by the word of knowledge, oh, you, you've got such and such, don't go, I, I, I believe that I received. So they take things that Brother Hagin would teach or, you know, about what Smith Wigglesworth said and that kind of stuff. Amen. You know, man, one man got to heal the line one night before and did, he came back next night. I came last night, but I didn't get anything. He kicked him in the seat of the pants and ran him off. Well, we hear stuff like that, and we, we kind of get, well, we, get we, we don't understand the whole thing that was going on there, and we get off, we get in error. Amen. Now, if you pray twice about the same thing, now, listen, it's not praying twice. If the Holy Ghost shows up, manifests, and, and somebody walks up to you and looks at you and says, you've been dealing with such and such, haven't you? Nope. God told him to come tell you that so he could deliver your package. Don't be foolish. I said, don't be foolish. There's the answer. I can, can, I, can you imagine the UPS guy he comes up to your door and says, you care, huh? Yep. Yeah, uh, well, I have a package. Well, no, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. 
Yes, I do. No, you don't. I've already received my package. What do you mean? I ordered it on, online. I used my credit card. It was mine. I have it. I know. Here it is. Nope. I'm the delivery guy. Nope. Mm -mm. I'm not going to say anything contrary. I already have it. Dodo brain, then when you go get it. And you, some people sent their stuff right back to the Lord. Amen. All right. So we're going to trust the anointing to work in us. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.